Okay, what we're going to do this morning is to go over the basic setup of the NAPA LP15 airway pressure monitor. The monitor measures mean airway pressure and was designed to monitor and measure pressures on bubble CPAP in the NICU environment. Fairly intuitive faceplate, on off button, zero cow, menu button, silence button, up and down buttons for setting your high and low alarm pressures. So we're just going to go ahead and plug in the unit. Simple power supply goes in the side of the unit. Press the on button, shows the latest version software. To access the low and high pressure limits, you would select the menu button and hold for one second. Goes to the current setting and you adjust that up or down to the desired low pressure alarm limit. To access the high pressure alarm limit, press the menu button one more time and set that accordingly. Typically, we try to bracket the ordered bubble CPAP. In this case, if they ordered six centimeters of water pressure, we bracket it at, at uh, five and seven for the high and low alarm limits. Press the menu button one more time. It goes to the uh, alarm setting and simply adjust your, your loudness on your alarm. Press the menu button to come out. You're ready to, to measure now. Simply need to hook up the sample line. It's a proprietary connector that snaps. It's a twist con connect for the uh, on the bottom of the unit. Connect in like that. You're good to go. The uh, other end of the sample line is a simple lower lock connector, and it makes it easy to connect to all the various respiratory devices and interfaces. For example, the Hudson Inca Prong interface typically has a lower lock connector on it. Simply we twist connect that on and be good to go. Uh, if you're using the Fisher & Paykel Flexi Trunk, it conveniently has a lower lock pressure port connector on the side of it, specifically designed for measuring bubble CPAP. Okay. Uh, if you don't have an interface with any of those lower lock connectors on it, you can certainly use the pop-off at the chamber. It comes with a pressure port here for monitoring pressure. Right on cue, the monitor has alarmed after two minutes. I'm just going to silence that for now. And you would connect the sample line to that lower lock connector on the pop-off. So some people like to monitor close to the patient, which is typically what we do, but there's no reason why you can't monitor the pressure back at the chamber. Because if you think about it, when somebody's on bubble CPAP, the whole pressure, the whole system is pressurized from the patient all the way back to the chamber. So basically if it's at six centimeters, six centimeters is disseminated throughout that circuitry. And if there's a disconnect, even at the patient end, the whole system is going to deflate and you're going to pick up that up here and the alarm will engage just fine, okay? If all else fails, you can use off-the-shelf uh, adapters, connectors that come with lower lock connectors built in, and you would just connect it to that, and you just connect that into the patient circuitry wherever you uh, desire. For more information, you can go to our website, drwmedical.com, and I'd be more than happy to offer you more information there. Thanks for your time. Okay, what we'd like to do now is demonstrate how to hook up the monitor to the bubble seat of the patient on the bubble CPAP system. This patient is on the flexi trunk system. We have the bubbler set at six centimeters, as you can see from the pro. Gonna turn the flow up to about five or six where it should be. And we simply connect the sample line that's connected to the bottom of the monitor at the other end with the lower lock connection goes to the lower lock connection on the interface. So we're gonna hook that up. It's a low alarm because it was uh, not sensing enough pressure. But we can simply double check where our settings are 
by pressing the menu button. We can see the low pressure limit is set at five, the high is at seven, and we're basically bracketing the, the set pressure of six centimeters or thereabout, okay? So the monitor's uh, working appropriately. Um, what I'd like to demonstrate real quick is if there's a disconnect, We'll just have a disconnect here instead of taking the interface off the baby. If there's an interruption in the in the pressure, you will get an alarm, uh, audio, and a visual alarm that you've interrupted that or broken the bracket. And the nice thing is, once you get the interface back on the baby and it comes within range, uh, the alarm automatically resets itself. Okay. If for some reason the probe accidentally goes in further or there's water in the expiratory line, it's going to go over that set pressure of seven and you're going to get a high uh, alarm, uh, both audio and visual. Again, the nice thing is once you bring that back into the parameters, the monitor, the monitor will automatically reset itself. Okay. The other thing is if you have an interface that does not have a lower lock connector somewhere, it's totally fine to connect the sample line, again, at the pop-off of the chamber. You can simply connect it here and it will function just as well. Take a second to come back within range and there you go. So again, if there's a break in the system, the whole system is going to uh, depressurize and you're going to get an alarm whether it's at the patient or at the chamber, okay? So you, you have it covered at either end. So that's basically how you uh, connect the monitor to the system at either end. We'll just reconnect it to the lower lock end of the flexi trunk and be good to go. For more information, you can go to our website, DRW Medical, dot com to see more information about the monitor. Thank you.